I'm Dr. Malik Cuddy at Lux Plastic Surgery. My concept of six-point facial contouring is a powerful and effective way to permanently give you a more elegant and refined facial shape. What I found, though, is that even with video surgery demonstrations and drawings, it's challenging to convey what exactly is happening to the overall aesthetic of facial contouring by doing this procedure. If you haven't already seen them, please view my other videos and posts on our social media sites, including Instagram and Facebook, where you can see before and after photos, as well as live surgery procedures. Please also subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and TikTok. I do a lot of remote video consults for the six-point facial contouring procedure. It's still not the same as having them in person, so I can show them on their face what I actually do. Michael has agreed not only to be a model for me, but to in fact let me do a live dissection so that you can see for yourself along the way the changes that I can make to your facial shape. Meet Michael. He's named after the craft store where I found him. Michael is the perfect model for my six-point facial contouring concept because as you can see, he doesn't appear overweight, but still has a very round face. This demonstration will give you what I think is a great explanation of my concept for facial contouring. When we look at someone, we see refinement when various facial structures are defined in contrast to neighboring areas. Some of it comes from solid parts like bone structure, as in the cheekbone here, which is that brown line, and some from the soft tissues that surround them. You'll see I've marked the six areas I focus on in this procedure, which are discussed in other videos as well. Let's get started with the consult and the procedure steps. Zone one is what most people focus on when they see a double chin. It's the most obvious thing you see in photos. You imagine yourself without it and how great you'd look if it were gone. If you're researching double chin solutions, you've heard of Kybella, cool sculpting, and other non-invasive double chin treatments. Usually, non-invasive translates to non-effective. Many of you are watching this and are unfortunate enough to have wasted money, time, and multiple recoveries on these non-invasive ways to remove a double chin. Either you've seen no difference, or when you do happen to see any difference, it's spotty and only in zone one. You don't look any better than before, and some of you now know what it looks like to have a dent behind your chin. Let's do this to Michael and see why that happens. We'll try Kybella and cool sculpting first. You now have small areas where there are uh, irregularities and some bumps and, and dips and that kind of thing. Disappointing, to say the least. Now you look mostly the same with some bonus lumpiness and scar tissue in that area. Now we'll send Michael for some double chin liposuction. He pointed out to his doctor that he didn't like this double chin here. The doctor obliged him with a five minute lipo right here in zone one. The effect of liposuction in this zone one, but only in zone one, gives you a flatter area here. So now liposuction was done just here in zone one. And lots of you who go to have double chin liposuction see someone point to this one area and that's where they have the liposuction. And you think, well, that was supposed to look a lot different than it actually ended up. And it's sometimes very hard to tell why it is that it looks a little bit disappointing. And that's because just doing it in this one area ignores all these other things that actually make your face look round. And the roundness is what causes people to focus on double chin not seeing all these things that can actually be altered in order to really give you a refined shape. Now we have a nice dent behind the chin, resulting in a wider appearing neck. Let's move over to zone two. This lateral part of the neck contributes to a chubby neck. Because it borders the jawline and lower neck, I can define the jawline and the middle part of the neck. That other doctor didn't really notice that beforehand, and maybe neither did you. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you take fat out from zone two, right here next to zone one, and how gradually we're going to start seeing the refinement of the jawline and all these other parts of the face. Now I've taken out fat from zone two, and I took it out on both sides so you can see what it does the edge of that is right here at the jawline. So when that fat comes out from right underneath that, you can really see the jawline now. And this is night and day from where he was before. What you've seen in some of my other videos is this zone three. And for younger people, what they're seeing is a kind of a chubbiness here that makes them feel like they have chubby cheeks. 
for patients who are a little bit older, like 40s and 50s even, some of that jowling is actually happening because the skin on this part of the cheek is starting to descend, so you see that fullness that comes down below the jawline. And for those patients, what I do is, in addition to taking out some from here, whether it's from chubby cheeks or from uh, aging and a little bit of fat and some of that skin of the cheek sagging down, I can take out enough fat here to make that contour even with the rest of their cheek from the groove that's here to this area a little further back on the cheek. And that will allow this whole area to be very nice and even right above where that jawline is. Now I'm gonna liposuction this area out. I took out a little bit of fat from zone three on each side of his face now. You should be able to see that this area is kind of straight this way, straight this way, and you can see the contour between this and where the jawline is because of this shape that's underneath it. The next area is zone four, and it's a very, very small area right behind the angle of the jaw. And taking that out allows you to see this corner, and it's a very, very subtle thing, and it's very little tissue in that area. But if I take this out, I can make it so you can really see the corner. Now having shaped zone four, what I have is this area behind the angle of the jaw. That's another thing that you perceive on somebody where you see a nice jawline. You're seeing this, but not really appreciating why it's there. And that's because you need this little depression right behind it. And when you see somebody who's got that shape, you can see how much more pretty their jawline looks. This area has very little fat. It's actually mostly connective tissue, and you've seen me do that in some of my other videos where I use a little tiny cannula to get that fat out from there. Uh, but I like to pay attention to that area because it's just such a huge difference in the result that you get. This next area here, area five, uh, is definitely missed by a lot of people when they are imagining what it is that they want their face to look like. Uh, Michael doesn't really have a very wide neck, but some people do kind of have it where it looks chubby uh, because of the sides having too much fullness there. What I'm going to show you here is what happens if I take out this area in zone five, just a little bit so that from the front, it'll make his neck look a lot narrower. Taking out fat from zone five here allows the side to come in enough that now his neck is a lot narrower. And it really takes very little fat. It's a small layer, very thin, uh, right at the edge, which is where you get the width of the neck. And now it looks much less chubby. It also blends very nicely into this area here, into zone four, and all of this area in the front of the neck. So you get a really nice, elegant shape where you can see the jawline and the neck is a lot narrower. The next part of this six-point facial contouring uh, my concept for overall facial shaping is the famous area six. Zone six is the buccal fat pad, and that's right in this one little spot here. This brown line is the zygomatic arch, which is usually referred to as the cheekbone. When somebody has a kind of a round face in this area, that chubbiness is really because you can't see any of the definition that comes underneath the cheekbone. The special part of six-point facial contouring is that uh, with my concept, what I'm trying to do is to make more definition in the mid-face. A lot of people will get that buccal fat pad removed as kind of an isolated procedure. It certainly makes the face look a lot nicer, and it makes the central part of the face a lot narrower. But with liposuction of the neck, which is those first five zones that I talked about, you get a much more elegant shape in this area from here down. But it doesn't affect anything that's happening from here up. And the reason that's important is when you have a narrower shape in this area, but also it's higher up now because this fat is gone. The vertical length of the face is now much less, but the horizontal distance is the same. That can actually make the overall appearance of the face to be shorter, and now you're back to having kind of a round face, even though you have a lot of definition here. You can get a little bit more of that round shape again now because you've changed the balance between the width and the height of the face by doing all of the shaping below here. Even though the shape underneath the jaw and of the lower part of the cheeks is much nicer. When 
this is shortened, you're now back to having a face that's almost as wide as it is tall in that area. So taking this out, the buckle fat pad, will allow this area to come in and narrow the face when you look at it from the front and even from the sides. This brown line here is the zygomatic arch, which is commonly referred to as the cheekbone. And contouring of the makeup that women do in the mornings, which takes a lot of time, is to produce that definition here at the cheekbone and darken the area underneath it enough to make it look like a shadow. Uh, this removal of the buckle fat pad is an actual way of uh, permanently and structurally changing that. So you don't have to do any of that contouring or any of that stuff ever again. The primary benefit is in the perceived shape of the face, because when that cheekbone is more defined and the area right underneath it is a little narrower, what people will see is now shorter top to bottom a little bit, uh, but with better definition. But now the middle of the face looks a lot narrower, and that's what gives the appearance of a very refined facial shape. And I'm going to show you what happens when the buckle fat pad is taken out, so you can see how it affects the shape. Now Michael has had his buckle fat pad removed. This is the effect that you get. Now the cheekbone has got better definition and it's pretty subtle. It doesn't give you that sucked in appearance that a lot of people are worried about. It's not going to make you look old. It's not the kind of thing where 30 years from now you're going to look so much worse than you would have otherwise because you've got this gaunt appearance. It really is a small piece of fat that's pretty far inside and when it comes out it just allows this area to sit down enough where you get a shadow underneath the cheekbone. When you look at them at a bit more of an angle, you can really see how that little bit of a shadow is really where you get the definition from. So it's not trying to take out big pieces of tissue. As you can see, most of these areas, it's fairly subtle, but really makes a nice shape. It's important to know what the buckle fat pad actually is so that you can get a good idea of what the effect is when it comes out. So I see a lot of patients who think that this is their buckle fat pad. I've actually had some patients where buckle fat pad removal was done by taking fat out from in here, which is not the correct thing. It's also not this area here. This is the jowl area and a lot of patients will kind of pinch different areas on their cheek and they say, well this is a chubby area. If I take out the buccal fat pad it's going to make this flatter. It does a distinct thing, gives a distinct effect for everybody, uh, which is bringing this in just enough to give you that shadow. So it's not going to affect the front part of the cheek, which is the cheek pad. It's not going to affect how your jowls look. And the reason that I like doing that so much is combination with these and also the reason that there are quite a few patients who say, oh, I just want the bottom of my neck done and I didn't like what I was being told about having this zone one taken out, so I'd like all this shaping to be done. Looks fantastic. Uh, it, when the swelling goes away, then they're looking at it and saying, I still feel like I'm a little bit chubby, and that's because of this area. When you have the definition of the jawline, it's really nice to have this parallel area where you have definition. So now you have a line here and a line here, both of which create a little shadow underneath them. And that appearance is a much more elegant, very refined shape. Now I've explained a little bit about what the buckle fat pad actually is. And what I want you to see here is my demonstration of what we're after when I take out the buckle fat pad. I'm trying to demonstrate here that it's really far inside. It's actually closer to the inside of your cheek than it is to the outside. So you can't do anything where you're actually pinching it and holding it. Keep in mind, this is actually done from the inside, but I'm trying to demonstrate where it sits and kind of what it looks like a little bit. So it, from all the way in there, it's about something this size. Even this little bit of stuff will give you a huge difference in the appearance of your overall uh, facial shape. This is uh, actually a little tomato but it was a perfect color, so I think it's a pretty good demonstration of what it is. Just taking out that small amount of stuff is what gives you this, and it's because it's so far inside, it just allows the cheek very subtly to sit back. As I said, this is a challenging concept to describe to patients because what they're pointing to and what they're focusing on is really only part of the problem, and I kind of know what someone's going to look like after I'm able to shape all of these things, but it's hard to convey that, and this is a very helpful way of seeing step by step why only doing this will give you one appearance and why each area that you're addressing along the way gives you the really nice defined refined shape that you're after. The improvement that you see in Michael's appearance is really really dramatic as you can tell and 
This is a procedure that I do with local anesthesia. It takes about an hour and a half for some people. Sometimes it's actually a little bit shorter. And it's in the office. You have the procedure. You go home right away. You don't have to recover from general anesthesia. There is some swelling, of course. And the swelling is mostly resolved at a week, but if you watch some of the other videos that I've done of actual patients, you can see even after a couple of days to a week, you have a huge difference in your facial appearance and people will notice even right away. The swelling takes some time to fully resolve and that could be three to six months. So even what you're seeing at the beginning just keeps getting better over time. And uh, patients have been thrilled with the results that they get. They're actually getting the result that they thought they were gonna get when they went to have Kybella or cool sculpting or you know, one of those other things. This is a one-stop procedure all of these things get taken care of at the same time you walk out with the facial shape that you were after. And all six of these points have to be addressed in order to get this overall really nice refined shape. None of those other non-invasive techniques will do that. All of them are expensive. They require multiple treatments. And after all of that, you've recovered numerous times from each of those treatments. You were usually pretty swollen and kind of ridiculous looking in between all of those. If you think about how long your overall process is with doing any of those things, given the fact that you have to recover in between each of those treatments, especially with Kybella, uh, and also the cost of doing all of those things, because each of those, of course, does have a cost associated with it. This procedure that I've done for Michael is that one trip, and in many cases, ends up being much more cost effective than doing any of those other things. Keep this video in mind. When you talk to me, you can actually now see what I'm trying to explain to you. But when I see somebody in person, I have a much better opportunity to kind of push these tissues around while they're looking at a mirror and they can really see that. If you have a double chin and you feel like you have a kind of a chubby face, six point facial contouring is a really great, very powerful way of achieving the facial shape that you want without focusing on that one thing that you might see. So in addition to subscribing to the YouTube channel, please also follow Lux Plastic Surgery on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Each of those platforms, we put different kind of content on, all of which are very informative and will help you make a decision that will make sense for you.